I would say I knew about it. Denis had mentioned it to me a, a couple of, I'd say a year earlier, but we really only come on two months before, um, and it's never enough time. Smaller films, makeup and hair, we're often only brought on two, two to three weeks before, and I think on this one it was maybe four, uh, I want to say four weeks, June, maybe four or five weeks with a little early prep uh, that I started doing from the U.S. a couple of months earlier. Um, it's really never enough. We're pretty much the last ones in, and that's my only gripe about the world of what we do in terms of prep on, uh, on a film like this. I think, uh, you know, every project is different. Every director is different. The way the costume designer or um, the production itself are working and where you're shooting. So if you happen to be on a, um, you know, a production, say, shooting in London or shooting in Los Angeles and the office is there and all the actors are there, it's, it's much, much easier for us. This was a little bit harder because we were um, filming uh, in Budapest. A lot of pre-production was done in Los Angeles. I was in Boston working on a film. Carrie was in London. Costume was in Canada. So it was a bit more difficult. Um, but I'd say we all start, um, you know, I came on board quite early and met with Denis and we started exchanging some photographs. Um, of what he thought this may be. Roger Deakins and I met a few times for dinner in Los Angeles, so we'd have uh, a sense of, of what they, because they really storyboard, the two of them storyboard six, I'd say it was six months to a year prior to my coming on board, that there'd been enough discussions of what, um, what this world may or may not be, and then we kind of fine tune everything. You know, because it's a, one of my favorite films and it, it's so iconic. When I started in the 80s on my first sort of uh, design job or department heading job um, was a sci-fi television series in the 80s, I remember referencing Blade Runner quite a lot. And of course, Marvin Westmore, the, the makeup design of the film was you know, it's iconic to this day. But I didn't really, I knew that Denis and Roger wanted to make a different film. This wasn't really necessarily Blade Runner 30 years later. This was a film that unto itself. So there were elements we borrowed, but I'd say elements is the key word, certainly for Denis, uh, because we were not remaking Blade Runner. We had our own film to make. And there were little elements. I went back and saw the film. Funnily enough, when we wrapped, um, and I went back to Los Angeles, I saw the, uh, the original film was on television. I was really glad I waited. In pre-production, I watched a, a Blu-ray version maybe halfway through and I stopped because it was starting to interfere with ideas I was trying to come up with, you know, with a, a costume designer and with Carrie, a uh, hair designer, that we had to just maybe step back from that a little bit. So it started on with that group, uh, Renee and, and Dennis Gassner, production designer. So they sort of come on board first and then I was brought on board and then I, you know, suggested Carrie Warren I really admired his hair work from Gatsby and you know, all those films that he called Kidman, so I thought it was a very good idea. And when Denis uh, and the studio came to me, uh, you know, how should we approach this? Because it was very much the kind of film where I think on paper, certainly for me and almost, and I'm sure Carrie will agree, you kind of read it and think, Blade Runner, what the, you know, it's a bit overwhelming. Um, and, and as it came back into reality, of, of being based in reality, I thought it was a great choice. So Carrie, um, who I've known for many years, uh, came on board. And then we subsequently put our, te our respective teams together. I had a, a great group of people um, who I've worked with two of them before, so that was very helpful for me uh, on the scope of a film like that. Um, and you know, we worked a lot with visual effects, I would say, more on the makeup side. I mean, hair and makeup sort of are so harmonious and it goes hand in hand. Um, I think visual effects has become much more part of the world of makeup and visual effects as well, because they you know, we scanned everything, uh, you know, CG indicator markers that we draw on. It's sort of become very collaborative as well. I know that Denis likes me to be on set all the time. So what will happen is I'll generally choose a few actors that I can work with directly uh, overseeing their look or doing their makeup day to day. So for instance, you know, Ryan, uh, Jared Leto, Robin Wright. But I do find that um, 
there are other directors and certainly other hair and makeup designers who work very differently, who don't do the set as often because there's so much prep involved. I find that for Denis, that's not really my style. I need to be on set. I need to be where the camera is. Um, it was, you know, quite involved with Ryan, a lot of out of kit makeup effects and blood and sweat and, and things that I really needed to be there for. There are other films, each department's different. You might be having to prep wigs or, or you know, makeup we're doing, fittings, that kind of thing. Um, it just depends on the film, but that one certainly was very hands-on because Ryan is in every scene of this film. And, and I'd be prepping by phone or at night or on the weekends. Makeup and visual effects, you know, it's always been, I've always worked really traditionally as costume, hair and makeup. I mean, the way Carrie and I work and what do you think of this? We're doing that with Rob and what do you think if we do, a, you know? But with VFX, what's interesting is sometimes we're in, we're sort of helping them create a character. So I obviously can't take any credit for the she sum in the film with Mariette, played by Mackenzie, and Anadarmus. That has nothing to do with hair and makeup. That's a brilliant visual effect with some CG uh, indicators on, uh, say, what we called new Rita and old Rita, or Rachel. That was CG indicators as a, a character creation that's purely in the visual effects world that took you know, 150 people. And, and John Nelson and Paul, it's, it's absolute sheer brilliance that we just enable a little bit. But other times, I think what's happening with, say, the pink uh, Joy, when she's larger than life. So, of course, they've you know, augmented her size. But that's still fundamentally in camera is a makeup job. Um, the contact lenses are practical. They are scleral lenses. The audiences are very knowledgeable. Some people still think that that's all visual effects. And we laugh about it because I think it's a jo the job's properly done. But sometimes we also have to say, well, actually, that was in camera. And, and that's very much a Denis Villeneuve and Roger Deakins way of working. Everything is in camera. Uh, but there are other films where they may actually create the pink character. And I'm you know, very quick to say sometimes the very old techniques I think that we used um, were very much part of the film. And, and the reflection with Ryan Gosling as Kay and, and you know, the pink joy was, was in camera. It's usually a, a question of time. There's never enough of it, it feels, uh, for me, uh, in recent years. Because we come on quite late, I know they rushed me to Budapest a few weeks early. Suddenly we weren't, you know, uh, we weren't meant to be there till the end of June, which I think was an oversight on their part to, you know, Denise saying, I need you to be here. And, you know, I'm on another film and we're all over the place. I would say the challenge, to be honest, the challenge really was a lot of the actors were committed to other projects. And I know Carrie can attest to this, it would make me, it was frustrating because I would have, we'd have Robin Wright, for instance, who's committed to a television series in America, hugely successful one. And we have her for eight days or 10 days, so we know costume, makeup, hair, we know we have her flying in for 12 hours, one day maybe. We get her, she leaves, she's coming back to film. Jared Leto may or may not be in the film. So I, I would say that uh, everyone tried very hard to keep it as um, concise and organized as possible. But for, for me, it was quite difficult because I would have Jared Leto confirming he's in the film. Al Khan saying, yes, we've got him, we're delighted, everyone's happy, it's Jared Leto. To next thing, a 15 hour day on the set in Budapest, I get back to the hotel and I'm having to wait to phone Los Angeles to speak with Jared and about his contact lenses and that's another hour or two and then all the semantics, all the organization that goes into that while I'm on set 15 hours a day um, we can't cut his hair, we can't do this. You know, there's a lot of restrictions placed on, on us and we have to come up with things that will work uh, within the realm of, of kind of possibility. And we came up with two possible looks for him. I would say it was a huge source of anxiety for me. I don't mind telling people that. And <laughs> uh, the contact lenses were a challenge, absolutely. Hand painted based on a friend of his who had lost his sight and, and you know, they're hand painted and they're two people literally in the world. 
I mean, what a job. I hand paint contact lenses. It's not something you just look up in the yellow pages. So there's one person uh, available, and we had 10 days. So there was a lot of favors involved to get these. Um, what other challenges? I would say um, coming up with things pretty quickly or not having the opportunity to meet someone. Dave Batista actually was a huge challenge because it was contingent maybe six months before. Uh, Denis rang me up and he said, do you think you can make this guy look older? Now I'd worked with Dave Batista briefly on a Bond film and he's one of the greatest, nicest people ever. And I knew Dave really wanted the film and I wanted to help him as well. Um, but they were concerned that he, they'd only seen him in Guardians of the Galaxy and Inspector and could he look older, which I knew he could. So I, I called uh, colleagues of mine in Atlanta where they were filming Guardians of the Galaxy maybe six months before filming and they did a makeup test to my specification and it worked. And we put photos side by side. Alcon signed off on it. Dave subsequently was hired. Uh, and I'm very happy about that because it could have um, gone another route. And he's terrific in the film. And it's a very traditional aging uh, with latex. And it was a, you know, not a simple makeup, but it was really an old school technique that I knew would work. And Denis was very happy with it. And to have Dave on the film was such a, a bonus for everybody.